Hello. Uh, this brief lecture recaps what I had to say in class about analyzing audiences. Again, it's an abbreviated version of the class discussion. Analyzing audiences is what we really do in this class. The audience analysis tools are the key to being a better writer. If we use these tools, we can make explicit assumptions about what will work or not work, and more importantly, why in our documents. Uh, and by document, I should say in our communications, whether we're talking about an oral report, a web page, or a written report. If we outline for ourselves who our audiences are and what we think our audiences need to know and what they need to be able to do once they know what we have to tell them, we can be uh, clearer for ourselves and for others in evaluating the choices we make in structuring a document. In fact, it allows us to devise evaluation instruments. Instead of just handing a paper to a trusted colleague and saying, would you read this, or giving an oral report to a friend and saying, what do you think? Uh, if you know what the audience is supposed to take away from your communication, you can devise evaluation instruments that test for that knowledge, test for that information. So you'll get uh, much better feedback uh, when you're working with a draft. That way we can evaluate our successes or our failures with much more precision. In fact, we can really take credit for it. In an earlier, uh, take credit for it with good reason because we know that we've done specific things that we can demonstrate to others that substantiate the credit we take for our, the success of our communications. In a prior uh, EMBA class some years ago, after this lecture, uh, a student said, well, that's, it's just like marketing. I mean, we, we wouldn't take a product and just put it out on the sidewalk and expect people to come by and say, oh, that's great. I think I'll buy that. We'd study the market. We'd find out who might buy it and why and what uh, need our product addressed. And what I'm asking you to do is to think about your important communications, obviously not just a memo you might write any day, but important communications is being worth the analysis that you might put into marketing a product. Who's going to read it? Why are they going to read it? Why, what do they come to that document seeking? And how can you meet their expectations that the document will be of value to them? That's why we analyze our audiences. We're going to work first with the egocentric organization chart and I'm going to skip down pretty quickly here to show you an example. These tell you who your audiences are and where they are in relation to you and that allows you to project the context needs of your audience. Recall we use that three-part uh, saying to understand what we should do when we write. Audiences need context before we can give them content and then we have to conclude and tell them what the significance of the content is. But context is most important. That is the word that goes with context of use. If we analyze and understand the context of use, we can meet our audience's needs. The egocentric organization chart comes from the work of uh, Mathis and Stevenson who were professors at the University of Michigan in their technical writing program. And uh, it's called egocentric because here you are right at the center of it. And each of these uh, circles, let's say that's John and, and this one is Bill and this one is Mary. I mean, you'd like to be able to put actual names in, in each of these. This one is Annie, let's say, whatever. You'd spell out the names. And in fact, you have this file as a word file. It's a simple graphical word file so that you can adapt it, type in names, add or subtract uh, these bubbles as you wish. Students usually call this the bubble chart because it's a bunch of bubbles. The idea is that there are groups in any large organization and you probably work in a group that's fairly close to you, your own group. People in here are probably pretty familiar with your work because your work is in many ways their work. So they don't need a lot of context to understand what you write or to get the need to know out of things that you write, out of communications that you produce. And unfortunately, most often when we get editing advice, we get it from people in our own group. 
So these people who are low context, meaning they don't need any extra context because they've already got lots of it, these, these folks tend to read it and say, yeah, it looks good to me because they already know quite a bit about it. As soon as your documents start moving further away from you, either within the organization, someone in close proximity, or someone elsewhere in the organization, or even someone all the way outside the organization, these audiences need more and more context to understand what you're thinking about. In fact, why don't we just put LB over here and I'll tell you who LB is in a minute. Someone in close proximity doesn't need as much context, but there are certain terms they may, may need to have defined. If you show them a chart of some kind that shows ten, trends in your project, at that level of detail, they're probably going to need more information than someone in your own group would. Similarly, by the time it gets outside of your group entirely to another part of the organization, still more context is needed. And when we're outside the organization entirely, we get people who are completely unfamiliar. These are often audiences that may read the document with purposes in mind quite apart from the, your intended audience, the people who were originally going to use it. These could be lawyers, judges, or even LB over here, Larry Barker. That media presence that's out there and wonders what's going on with the document. Indeed, you need to think about all of these audiences when you put together a communication. So the idea is just to fill this out, put in actual names or org numbers if you don't have a name uh, or uh, corporate entities if there isn't a particular name, but you should tr strive to personalize this as much as possible and use real names wherever possible. This example is from a uh, class, an EMBA class in uh, oh, 1998 as I recall. And the student it was the consumer marketing director for Outside Magazine. Outside Magazine is published in uh, Santa Fe. She's one of those students, and there's, there's always uh, oh anywhere from 6 to 10 in any given class who will come up to me and say, you know, I can't really do this. I, I, I only have one or two audiences. She thought she had only one audience, and that audience was the VP for Finance and Administration. On a Wednesday, she'd send this fellow an email, and, uh, and in, in her uh, communication, she would outline sales for the week and would put it entirely in text and just say, here's the sales. These sales are tied to these particular advertisements we ran. We saw sales go up in the Dallas area for Nike based on, and, and we tie that directly to our uh, uh, Dallas uh, subscriber base, etc. That's basically what she did. Pretty important job. It had to do with the bottom line generation of money through advertising. The, excuse me, the VP for finance and administration would then prepare for a meeting with the CEO that he had on Friday and which she usually attended. Her figures would come up during this meeting with the CEO. It was a face-to-face -face meeting. They might have some talking points uh, from the materials that she would give to him. But after this meeting, he would go back and prepare something that on Monday would go to the VP for Business Development. The VP for Business Development produced a report that went out to everyone, everyone in the company through an internal sort of newsletter, it wasn't really a newsletter, a business report that came out on Monday afternoons. Our consumer marketing director very seldom read this report. And you know, I'm actually going to leave that there. I, I don't want that to disappear, so you're just going to have to put up with these blue lines. Sorry. Because uh, she didn't read it because what was she went and looked to see if some of the things she'd reported were correct. But mostly this was old news to her, stuff that she'd done the Wednesday before when she was talking to the VP over here. As soon as she did this audience analysis, she not only saw who her audiences were, but she realized that everyone in the company was, in a very significant way, a member of her audience. Because this also shows you something about the flow of information, how information gets around, how your information gets around. And 
the story here is that she was most interested in this audience out here, an audience completely outside the company. They had hired a consultant to see whether or not they should go with a new magazine, Women Outside. Our consumer marketing director was very much a supporter of the Women Outside project, and they even had named a, a potential editor for it here. So she was actually, had already started uh, putting information into the report she gave to the VP for Finance and Administration that was paid directly to sales to women, uh, to targeted audiences for women, to ads that targeted women. And she realized that the consultant up here, when he made his recommendation, was actually not going to read her report, but was a very interested reader of this report that the VP for Business Development put out there. So she, after this audience analysis, made specific changes to this document, the document that she had been giving. And I'm going to give it three lines and a big arrow now, because not only it stayed as an email but it had attachments it also had visuals instead of just quoting numbers she would show trends and charts and graphs in other words her goal was to give that VP um, essentially camera ready copy copy that would not only influence the CEO over here but would go f from the CEO over to the VP for business development in uh, ready form and sure enough more and more of her stuff started appearing in this document because she was giving more information that was ready to appear in here. She realized she wasn't really writing for this person. She was writing for this document if she meant to influence the entire uh, organization. So this first look at audience asks you to figure out who they are and where they are in association uh, in relation to you. And then something about the flow of information. How does your writing, your communication, influence your larger organization? That's what our first audience report is all about.